Thanks again for doing the interview with me. Um, I think you're the first computer science PhD that I talked to. So it's really interesting just trying to get to know, especially during COVID-19, like how that works and everything. So yeah, I'm yeah. excited to learn more about it. Um, do you want to give um, a quick like overview about like kind of where you went to school for your undergraduate and like how you discovered computer science and all that? <laughs> All right, awesome. So, hey, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm Chinasa Okolo. Um, I'm currently a third year PhD student in computer science um, at Cornell University, and I completed my bachelor's degree um, in computer science as well um, at Pomona College in Claremont, California. And so, when I originally came into undergrad, I just had the idea that I wanted to work in biology. I was always fascinated. Um, you know, with those concepts and also, you know, being uh, the daughter of Nigerian immigrants, they definitely kind of emphasize like the medical field on me. And so I, I did have an interest in it. But when I came to college, I realized I wasn't really interested in taking like biology. Like when, once I finished like genetics, it's my first semester. Well, the first semester I took it. And then after that, like I was in cell biology, I actually mm -hmm. dropped it the next day. Um, but really, um, yeah, I guess my motivation just for doing this was for coming into computer science was that I actually realized like I could use computational techniques to advance um, topics in biology and medicine. And so I've been able to like leverage that interest um, definitely like throughout my undergrad. And so I did a lot of like research um, in computational neuroscience and computational biology. So I was able to still like have those same interests as well. Why did you choose to pursue a PhD in computer science? Um, and kind of like what led to that decision? Sure. So um, when thinking about my journey into the PhD, honestly, I just felt like it was a natural um, step after undergrad. Um, when I was undergrad, I never did um, any like software engineering internships. I actually had an offer at Intel for one summer, but I turned it down to do research um, at Carnegie Mellon. And so kind of like continuing on that trend, I mm -hmm. did research every single summer um, in undergrad, you know, in those fields I talked about before. Mm -hmm. um, and I also just like just knew that research was something that came natural to me and that I wanted to like continue on. And then also like um, knowing that like being in a PhD program allows you to pursue your own research agenda was also very um, intriguing to me. And kind of thinking about my career tra trajectory in general, mm -hmm. um, when I wanted, when I originally came into the PhD program or like was applying to PhD programs, yeah. um, I thought that I was going to be a professor, but I um, actually did a research internship at Microsoft Research um, after I graduated from Pomona. And I got really interested in like the intersection of industry and academia. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of leaning more towards, you know, being both in industry and academia by like working at like a, you know, large research institution and also like at an industry lab, like Google um, AI or, you know, like Microsoft Research as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, knowing that like, just um, I knew that I had to get a PhD to get into the roles that would be best um, for my career. So that kind of motivated um, my PhD journey. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, and what are some of the weekly tasks that you do as part of a PhD? Um, maybe you could tell us a little more about the types of research you do and things like that. Sure. So I would say my research is split mainly into like two parts. And so I have a bit more technical side mm -hmm. and then more of the qualitative side, which I kind of been exploring this summer. And yeah. so just with the technical stuff. Um, so I develop computer vision models to detect pneumonia um, in baby. And so right now I'm, I'm focusing on like defining these machine learning techniques um, to recognize like fine grade motions. Mm -hmm. um, so trying to recognize like sneezing, coughing, just by looking at, you know, someone's uh, face or their chest. Oh, wow. And so um, that's kind of motivated my work. And so I've been working with a couple of undergrad students to help me develop um, or like integrate this pipeline into a mobile app um, that can be used throughout places in the global south and other low resource regions where, you know, um, pneumonia kills, you know, babies at a disproportionate rate. And so that's um, my technical work that's where it's mainly concentrated in. Uh -huh. And then in terms of my qualitative work, um, I kind of like to look more at the implications of AI and, you know, it's become a big thing um, just generally. And so I'm very interested, um, especially applying the implications and also perceptions um, of AI into the global South. And so actually um, this summer, um, I did a research study virtually in India. I was actually supposed to be um, in India conducting field work 
And so just interview like a bunch of community health workers trying to like, you know, gauge um, how they perceive AI, especially um, in mobile health apps, which should become more common um, in these regions. And so kind of like tying that into my, into my weekly tasks, um, depending on um, like which side of the project that I'm working on, um, I'll either be focused on eat one or the other, but now that I've got into the semester, I'm kind of focusing on both as a, both at the same time. And so I kind of start off my week by scoping what I need to get done, just because Monday is always like a bit of a slow day for me. I either have like a lot of meetings or just like not enough time to like focus solely on mm -hmm. something. So I figure that like if I can just map it out, then I'll be good to go for the rest of the week. And yeah. so usually I have my, I have meetings with my advisors on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And so Wednesdays is like the meetings where I talk more about my qualitative work. And so right now I'm actually working on a literature uh, sur survey um, or literature like study. And so I'm just like scoping out literature that's relevant to topics uh, within like ethical AI, AI and you know the implications of AI and all that stuff. And so um, I just like, you know, do that on Tuesday. And then also I'm trying to, I guess like make paper edits. Um, we recently submitted a paper to a major conference um, in the field of human computer interaction. So we just, we're just preparing, um, you know, for any feedback that we may receive. So just want to be on top of that. And then going into like my technical work, I'm constantly in contact with the undergrad I'm working with. And so like, he's been very great and, you know, doing a lot of the technical work for me because I do not like do mobile or app development at all. So it's really great to have someone who can help with that. And so we just like, you know, talk back and forth throughout the week over Slack. Um, trying to like, you know, figure out which stage of the project we're uh, working on and trying to get that through. So it's really just like a lot of off and on. I don't have a super, a lot of structure because I do a lot of things outside of my research as well, but it's really just, you know, trying to make sure um, I'm on, on task. Yeah. Okay. So is, do you do any teaching or taking classes at all or? Um, oh yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. And so actually, well, I'm not teaching anymore. I finished my TA requirement. So fortunately, um, hopefully I won't have to teach again, but we'll see. Um, but in terms of courses, I do have courses every day except for Friday. And so they're both in the afternoon noon around the same time. So I do take time um, to go to courses. And also like coursework um, is also like a, a big thing that takes up time. Mm -hmm. um, for one of my courses, one of my other courses is a seminar. So I'm just literally listening to the teacher the whole time, but I'm actually taking a course in the business school. Mm -hmm. And so entrepreneurship for scientists and engineers and so um that it's, it has a team project that, we're, that I've been working on and so it's definitely a bit more intensive. Okay so is it similar to undergraduate classes where you have um like assignments and exams and things like that as well? Yeah so fortunately I don't have any exams but we do have assignments like check-in so we're like working on this idea and we have to like mm -hmm. present it to the um, to the class yeah. um, we get picked out of them so we never really know when we're going to present but we just have, have to have it ready but okay. yeah it's a the, series of projects. Cool. Um, so what would you say are some of the challenges involved with doing a PhD? Um, anything that you found a little difficult while you were on this journey? Yeah, definitely. So for me, I would say I'm even my third year, I'm still getting used to like time management. And from honestly, it's kind of been a bit worse, just especially like working from home because I was mm -hmm. able to set boundaries for when I would work and kind of like my commute kind of dictated you know, like when I needed to be in the office and also like, you know, so that would be my working time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still trying to like tra transition or like, you know, switch into a healthier, um, you know, work, work life balance from that. But I think it is definitely possible to have work life balance in grad school. You just have to be like, um, I would say intentional in setting that. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, I would say time management. And then also just like, there's so many opportunities um, that I'm, I have to like kind of stop myself from you know getting involved too much because I have to realize like oh this is not undergrad like you know you need to be focused on your research and so I definitely do that kind of comes into my time crunch as well because I'm definitely I'm probably like a bit more involved more than the average graduate student and so right. still just like, trying to manage um, that time as well and then challenges definitely like you know everyday things like you know, trying to make sure like your research topic, uh, I, I guess like everybody comes, we in your PhD um, study, like you're supposed to contribute um, to your field and also like, you know, create novel um, things within your field as well. So just like trying to ensure that um, I feel comfortable in doing so and that like I'm making sufficient progress, you know, towards my PhD. So just the challenges of, it's just everything is is a balance. And so that's really, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, 
I know that you have a couple of fellowships. Um, would you be able to tell us a little bit more about how those work for people who don't know what a fellowship is and like how the application process was and everything? Sure. Yeah. So yeah, I'm very grateful, um, you know, to have a couple and be supported by them. And so for me, I would just like to say a fellowship is basically a more extensive scholarship where they provide support for both um, your tuition um, and a stipend. I, I don't think scholarships usually provide a stipend. So that's mm -hmm. the major differentiator. And so um, it's great because, you know, in, in grad school, you need to be paid because you have to eat and like you're, <laughs> you're basically working well. Yeah. And so it's, it's great to have the extra money. And it's also, it kind of frees you up from the commitments that you may have. And so, mm -hmm. um, other things like teaching and so like if you're on a fellowship you probably do not have to teach um, and you can just you're able to focus on your research and also usually can get paid a higher stipend than what you would be if you were just teaching and so that's also like an added bonus for you and mm -hmm. so I guess in terms of the fellowship application process is very similar um, to kind of the grad school process I know some have like research statements and personal statements and mm -hmm. also like you need um, recommendation letters as well and so I guess when crafting, you know, these documents, you just want to kind of highlight your research capabilities, because that's really what the goal of getting a fellowship is for. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of, so they know like what research you have done and what you want to do in the future. And sometimes like, you know, these fellowships can kind of be targeted or very specific. And so I know there are some government fellowships that, you know, see the potential of your research um, to be used within their respective systems throughout the government or like the army. Um, mm -hmm. you know, which can be problematic a bit, but I mean, a, a lot of times like other companies as well, like, you know, Google or Facebook or Microsoft, like they definitely um, like to see people for if, like, for example, for Facebook, if you're doing work in misinformation, like, you know, that's definitely something that's very mm -hmm. relevant to Facebook. And so like your research could help them advance their own agendas and they're willing to pay you for that. And so it's always, you know, a trade off a little bit, but it definitely can help you kind of provide footing and um, give you, I guess, like the resources you need to advance your research and finish your PhD. So that's really the main goal. Yeah, cool. Um, do you have any other advice for aspiring computer science PhDs? Um, like maybe if they're in their undergraduate, are there any tips or things that would probably help them? Um, I know that you mentioned that you did a couple of research things during the summer. Um, mm -hmm. For somebody who hasn't done it yet, do you think that should be um, a good place to start? Oh yeah, most definitely. And so honestly, like the the main thing you're doing in your PhD program is research. Mm -hmm. And so it's really kind of rare for people to come into a program without doing research. And so it does kind of, I guess, like to say it looks bad on your application because, you know, you um, you want to show evidence that you are able to like carry a research project, mm -hmm. um, either like if you've done one on your own or like with a professor, I think it's more common to do it. And like, you know, these different programs, like I did REUs, which are um, research experiences for undergraduates. Um, mm -hmm. They are funded by the NSF. And okay. so you'd like do research under a professor um, at a university. And so um, if you kind of, like I said, like I was saying, if you don't have that experience, then it's honestly like kind of hard to see how you'll survive throughout the patient program because that's basically like what you'll be doing. Yeah. And so like um, any way that you can get that experience is great. And so honestly, um, I've had, you know, a lot of undergrad students approach me as a grad student, you know, to get experience. And so it's very easy just because, there's always something that a grad student needs done. Like, like I said before, I'm not so good at like mobile and app development. And mm -hmm. so like doing research, developing that is like a research project as well, mm -hmm. even though it may seem like very technical and not like so theoretical. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also like going up to professors as well um, it helps mm -hmm. and then also applying to these programs. Yeah. And then um, another tip I would have is definitely when you know that you want to apply for a PhD program, just start early. Um, I know a lot of schools are kind of removing the GRE requirement. So fortunately, like you probably will not have to take it depending on like what schools you apply to. But mm -hmm. I took mine um, pretty late. I took it in December um, of my senior year, which is, you know, very late. And yeah. so the earlier you can get that done is great. And also making sure you have ample time for people to review your essays and statements as well. Mm -hmm. And also because when you're applying for like these PhD programs, you'll probably be applying to fellowships as well. And so that's like twice the work. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you like have your statements done early, you can reuse them for both and you don't really have to worry about the time crunch. So that's why I always say start early. Yeah, that's a good tip. So one last question for PhDs, um, how long is it usually? Is there like, a, mm -hmm. how does it usually work? Because um, undergraduate, it's usually four years. 
um, and master's degrees or two years do PhDs mm -hmm. have that sort of like time or is it kind of dependent on how your research goes and things? Yeah, so I mean, some schools may have like residence requirements. So I think for Cornell, like if you come in with a master's and you're only required to um, stay for like four semesters um, or maybe six semesters, I can't remember exactly, yeah. but it really depends because sometimes you can, people go straight into the PhD like I did Oh. people go to a master's and a PhD and so like if you go straight into a PhD like I did you get your master's along the way um, uh -huh. once you like do your proposal uh -huh. um you know that or a exam that's how they call it in my department and so like you'll get the master's after th two or three years uh -huh. and then you'll continue on like as normal for your PhD uh -huh. and then if if not I would say um like you do two years for a research master's and then you'll probably either do like three or four years for the PhD uh -huh. program depending on like um, if your research that you did for your master's is very similar to your PhD program. Mm -hmm. And I know like in your can be very much shorter, like three years or so, but mm -hmm. it's just because it's more common to come in with the master's, so. Okay, okay cool. Well, thank you so much. This was really helpful yeah. and interesting to hear about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm really glad um, yeah, that we got this interview done. And yeah, I really like your slides. They really look nice. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, um, I guess like if anybody has any other questions or anything, mm -hmm. is there somewhere that they can find you or anything? Sure. Um, so it's, yeah, it's pretty easy to find me. So you can always Google me, but uh, my website is firstnamelastname.com. Um, so chinasocolo.com. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at um, and And my website also has like links to all my social media as well. Cool. Definitely check out my website. Yeah.